for the beginning, uh, you could tell me a bit about your band, you know, who and what is uh, Grub Fist and uh, how did the current lineup come together? Uh, so basically, probably Bogdan is our fresh blood. He joined our band this year, and thus we uh, it was uh, like a push for us to move on. Uh, not move on, but move blood. forward. <laughs> yeah, to move forward uh, uh, to play gigs, to record some songs and stuff like that. Because before Crop Feast, we had several previous bands in in metal genre but in different subgenres and basically our core uh lineup is from that age it was like uh 2008 or something like that so basically we had a smaller band uh not smaller but we had a, a band that was playing heavy metal and something like power metal music and uh, then we've uh, transformed in a mid 2010s uh, into something more groovy and more modern metal like and then we brought it like to the crop fist right now but basically we formed the band with uh, my friends from our neighborhood <laughs> and the three of us still uh, in this band even our uh, singer Nadia uh, she's from our neighborhood we know her for uh, for for quite a lot of time prior to joining our band. So basically it's like a uh, sort of friendly communion, so to say. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which neighborhood this is? So which neighborhood's band is Krabfist? We were located in Kyiv and it's on the left bank of uh, of Kyiv. Uh, it's like, uh, it's called uh, Lisovy Massive. It's like a small, uh, small region in Kyiv that is surrounded by the forest. No, 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 no man. Uh, Lisovy Massive. It's like a ghetto in USA. <laughs> <laughs> it used to be so, but, but, but it's so different now. <laughs> yeah. Well, you mentioned the words groovy and modern. So how would you kind of describe the music of Krabfist in your own words? Basically, this is uh, oh, we're playing metal. We, we never try to feed some kind of genre, subgenre and stuff like that from from the beginning. I'm not that very I was not very fond of uh, extreme vocal techniques and stuff like that. But it grew on me from uh, during the time. But basically, we keep kept that uh, we don't have a lot of uh, extreme vocals but we like this uh, alternative vibe that was brought to the, during the 2000s era with with bands like system of down corn probably something like post grunge like godsmack and stuff like that but uh, it's hard to define because also we have this like heavy metal power metal roots i like a lot of progressive music and so on and so on so basically it's some kind of mishmash of different different genres sub subgenres but basically uh right now we uh, our music is more streamlined uh probably we can call it a bit more simple in this sense so it's not something challenging to the challenging to the uh here um, to the listener so basically yeah uh, I think uh, Krafis is uh, like uh, Godsmack with uh, power metal. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. <And for>, maybe. <laughs> it is easier for Bogdan to uh, have some kind of uh, opinion on that because, as I've said, he joined recently and thus he is not involved in the process and he can give this distant uh, uh, opinion <laughs> on what it sounds like. Well, where does the inspiration come from for the music and lyrics? All the music, probably on the drum part, uh, uh, drum inside, uh, Bogdan will answer, but uh, I'm reading the music right now. Uh, we have several songs that we are bringing back from that old old era. We modified them and stuff like that. So it was written by me and my friends that were in the band at that point of time. Right now, usually I uh, I like to do, I like to hear some interesting riffs or leaks in songs from 
whole different band that I'm listening to. Then I try to decompose them. So I'm learning them and stuff like that. They Then they go to like uh, to my subconsciousness. And when I'm jamming home, uh, usually something comes together and then I try to jam it through to create like the full song. So basically it starts with some cool riff or stuff like that. And then I transform it to the full full, full scale song. Uh, usually, I'm writing a lot more than goes to the to the song itself. It was like evolutionary process because prior to that, I would like to put everything that I come up during these jamming sessions. And for the lyrics, uh, we are not that uh, original in this case. So basically, we are, oh, we like different. Uh, sci-fi themes fantasy themes some something mystical and stuff like that and thus uh, basically the main points of inspiration are books movies uh, even uh, video games and stuff like that so they usually inspire me on some topic or, st or stuff like that then i try to uh, modify uh, to create some kind of story around that and then i try to convey the story through the lyrics basically most of the time because there are different cases but mostly they are like something uh, from 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 this uh, area so to say yeah and for drumming parts probably but none can elaborate a bit more uh, i think uh, drums drum parts uh, uh, it's about uh, simple and very groovy so i think it's all what i can now say if we talk about gigs a bit, uh, you have still kept uh, playing gigs even under the Russian attack. How is it to uh, plan and play concerts at the moment? It's very... Um, I think uh, it's funny. No, sarcastic maybe. Uh, because uh, it's funny when uh, your friends call you and uh, say, I can't be here because uh, metro not working, uh, transport uh, not working, you know, it's stuff like that. It's chic. Yes, and uh, and you are ready for gig and starting without people, uh, it's it's very <laughs> funny. <laughs> Yeah, basically, right now, the, the main limitation that we have right now is a curfew. And uh, because of this curfew, there is some limitations on how long can the gigs be held. So basically, they should all uh, over like at uh, nine o'clock in the evening or something in, in this way and that they need to start earlier so basically and you can imagine how <laughs> how it feels to start a gig like at five or six o'clock in the evening so basically everyone especially if we are talking about the weekdays uh, everybody is still at work or trying to get through the city and and so on and so on so probably this is the main the main difference that we have right now because usually we, we, Prior to that, we had like uh, the the beginning of each gig uh, should be at uh, seven o'clock, but basically uh, we never started that. No, well, prior to war, it usually starts at like eight o'clock, nine o'clock, and then it helps uh, through the midnight and stuff like that. So basically, it's it's more appropriate metal times to say. <laughs> and right now, right now, it's feeling like a kid in garden story or something like that. So basically, it's probably the main change. Change. We haven't uh, had missile attacks and uh, during our show because uh, due to safety limitations, uh, the shops should stop. And thus, we don't know how that feels and how that interrupts. But basically, I can't believe that it's quite, a, a, so to say, pain in the ass <laughs> to navigate through these things. But overall, we keep we keep playing. So other bands keep playing. It's quite. It's if we don't take this uh, moment regarding the time frame that we need to fit uh, the new time frame, everything feels like it was prior to war right now. How is the atmosphere on the gigs? Atmosphere is good. Uh, I. I have a feeling that people appreciate gigs even more right now because we can't have many different uh, foreign bands that are, uh, that can uh, come to Kyiv or other Ukrainian cities and have their gigs. 
uh, but but people are striving for this kind of entertainment and thus uh, there are more people and they are more willing to be open to the new music that we produce or other bands produce from Ukraine. It's helping to some degree it's helping a lot. How is the scene doing under the Russian attack? How is the metal and rock scene at the moment? It's striving and probably I can tell that it's in best shape that was uh, yeah because uh, first of all because of the tragic situation that we have right now yeah it's it's quite uh, it's quite difficult to um, keep the, our spirits high but we are try we try to be but overall it seems like a resurgence of Ukrainian metal scene because right now everyone have uh, this aim this goal usually we don't have gigs like the, uh, the that are simply gigs usually we have these gigs and we are collecting money on different uh, for different uh, armed forces brigades and stuff like that so basically you are not only listening or playing metal but you are doing something good for your country for your people for your army and thus it gives uh, additional purpose and meaning to everything that you are doing so yeah it's uh, and as I've said uh, people are striving for uh, for music striving for gigs and so on and thus uh, the attendance is higher and overall the openness to other bands is higher and you can uh, uh, represent yourself on the on our local scene much better and reach more more people in this in this sense yeah if i understand correctly you have some new music on the works could you tell a bit about the new material uh, we are right now we are recording our uh, older material so it's it's a mix of older music and the music that uh, was written during the, the war time uh, so and right now uh, I'm working on several newer songs <laughs> so to say because uh, there are when you start gigging you understand that there are, some material works great some materials don't work that great in life uh, surrounding and you need some songs that uh, some songs that must uh, fit um, purpose basically right now I'm trying to work on some kind of opener for the show or something that would be quite uh, driving uh, but uh, to some extent simple because it's usually quite cold <laughs> <laughs> in all these <laughs> clubs uh, at the beginning and thus you have these cold hands, cold feet, uh, vocal cords are not well uh, warmed up and stuff like that. So you need something simple to, uh, it must be something simple, but it must be something very engaging so that you can uh, pull the crowd to the scene. So you have this like uh, uh, boost from from the crowd in this sense, and also it must be something that you can play in any condition uh, in this regard to how how good or bad you warmed up prior to that. So and right now we're working on some some song that would fit this purpose. I'm not sure if <laughs> we would be able to, but we're working on something like that. Overall, yeah, it's it's a bit uh, utilitarian approach, <laughs> so to say. But overall, we're working on that, and uh, the, the stuff that I have right now, it's like in harmonic minor, and a lot of diminished uh, element it has a lot, a lot of elements from diminished scale, and thus I want to uh, add there some uh, mystical lyrical themes, something like that. So overall, mm, uh, uh, to bring this like uh, uh, an opening, an epic opening for for, for the show. Do you have any idea when the new uh, material that you are recording now, when it will be out, and what other future plans do you have for Grabfist? Basically, uh, we are, rec uh, uh, as I've said uh, right now, we are recording our prior stuff, so the, the, the one that we are gigging with right now, and we have two songs recorded there mixing. And so probably in like a week or two, or maybe maybe a bit later, but I believe in like a week or two, we'll be able to release them. Uh, and then we are planning to make some videos, video clips. We've already recorded uh, some kind of live session on the on the Bogdan Studios. Uh, yeah, and we are planning to release that as well. So the key idea is to record several songs it would be like from five to eight probably something like that during the next like half a year maybe maybe more it all depends on 
how it all will come together and uh, continue gigging. So basically our idea is to keep on playing uh, live, keep on playing on stage. So right now we have two more gigs uh, during December. Uh, and then probably try to ramp it up during the uh, January, February, and and so on, and try to uh, join. Uh, we have several festivals right now in uh, like uh, in Ukraine, uh, and uh, our main goal is try to reach to the uh, to these festivals to take part in them. So basically, it would be quite cool if you would be able to feed that. Well, it was, uh, to be honest, so we have different opinions here in Ukraine. I believe that if you ask the different band, they have a lot of different opinions. There are, the, it seems there is a saying that if you want to, if you have some topic and you take three, like three Ukrainians, they would have totally different opinions on that topic. So basically, I believe it works to many nations, but overall, uh, Ukraine is not that different in that as well. Uh, overall, uh, right now it feels, uh, to be honest, the shock of the first days of war, it was quite paralyzing to some extent, yeah, because we will faced it, uh, mm, I can't tell totally unprepared because there was a feeling that something is going to happen. Mm, so basically, uh, there are, um, but overall, it it feels like something from the prior life, like the everything that was before the war was from the prior life. Then this period of the beginning of the war, it's also uh, sometimes you can go back to that, and uh, it's it's quite shocking, quite shocking experience. Uh, but overall, uh, we've strived. We've uh, I don't want to say fought because we are not fighting on the front line. So basically, this is uh, like the burden of our defenders, and uh, we are totally grateful to, for to them for that. Uh, but um, it's tiring for for this period of time. So basically, I can tell that we are we don't believe in our victory or stuff like that. But it's taken its toll. So yeah, it's lasting for quite a long time and probably would last for uh, at least a year uh, for the next year. I don't see how it can end uh, without some kind of uh, <laughs> tragic accident, so to say, that would that all the Ukrainian people would be grateful for <laughs> do any kind of uh, extraterrestrial, uh, not extraterrestrial, but any kind of uh, transcendent forces that would <laughs> send us, basically. Uh, but overall, if we are talking in the way that is uh, unreal, uh, is it going right now, it's like a long fight that we need to uh, prepare and that we are uh, trying to accomplish. So, uh, I want to say... Um people of uh, Latvia, Lithuania, Estonia and uh, Finland must be prepared because uh, Russian barbaric uh, <laughs> it's um, they are not humans they are mm -hmm. uh, so basically yeah the, the idea that Bodan is trying to convey is that uh, the threat is real so basically we were the ones who uh, probably uh, we felt that something is coming, but we didn't uh, want to believe in that. And thus, uh, right now, it seems quite crazy because they are like, it feels that they are stuck here in Ukraine. But overall, uh, they are quite crazy people to make some diversion, stuff like that. So basically, yeah, it's probably the, the we don't want to be alarmist or something like that. But it's better to be prepared than not prepared. <laughs> we can say, but by our own experience. Fuck Russia!